just extraordinarily beautiful. I can tell with this down there is going to be hard work. On this south facing slope, the risk of avalanche is high. I want to get off here as quickly as possible, and there's one quick route down. It's actually quite, quite slippy here, but I reckon I'll be able to slide and glissade this bit. But one thing I want to try is whether I can just use this drogue parachute off my skydiving chute and try and use it as like an air brake. Okay, here goes. Well, the drogue slowed me down quite nicely, but I still went fast. I'm in the Canadian Northwest looking for a route off a glacier. There's nothing around here to tie a rope to, so I'm making a bollard by digging down into the ice. I can use just the black tape from this drogue and drape that around the ice bollard. Okay. Seems good. Okay. Whoa. This ice here, look at it, it's completely see-through. It's quite a scary place to be. I'll try and move my weight down to this bit here. And that is what I've got to crawl out of. Okay. Okay, well I'm out of that hole, and that's what lies ahead, look at that for a view. And it's time to find some food. You can see this dam here, this has actually been made by beavers. Look, you see the teeth marks on all of this. The beavers have abandoned this dam, but I might be able to use it to trap something. But actually, look, there's quite a nice natural kind of channel here. I might well be able to use that and the dam they've made and see if I can catch some fish. Inspired by the beavers, I'm going to extend the dam and create an improvised fish trap. I'm trying to shake this, a bit like a funnel. So it's nice and easy for me to corral the fish in. But once they're here, then it's harder for them to find the exit again. There should be pike, grayling and trout in this lake. And I'm hoping to spook a few of them into my trap and then close the opening. <laughs> The doors are closing. And it seems to be working. Already several sucker fish have strayed in. They're not monsters, but there's a good number of them. You can see there are at least, at least five or six in there now. Now all I've got to do is get them out. There he is. Hit. It's a basic but ancient method. Hitting the water hard creates shock waves that should stun the fish. Too biggie, too biggie. Got one, a little grayling. Kind of hope for more than that, but that's going to be dinner. really want to do all of your cooking and eating at least 100 yards from your camp. I've actually got one friend who's out moose hunting and he didn't do this, ate his supper just by his tents. 
and in the middle of the night, a black bear came in and he thought, scared away, shine a torch in his face, but instead, the bear just ran at the light and they only managed to survive as the guy managed to shoot it, literally as the bear was coming through the tent flaps. I'm in gold rush country, in the extreme northwest of Canada, trying to get through the tough forest terrain. Man, check this out. We're finding this river is good news. And in a place like this, where there's so few roads, these rivers really are the highways that just cut through the wilderness. But it's quite high here. You want to get it right? It's hard to read a scree slope from the top, and that was definitely hairier than I'd imagined. On the other side of the river, a canoe has been left. I could use it to travel downstream, but first I need to cross this river. And that's only thigh deep, and there was no way I could find that. That just took me. Okay, we're across. Let's go check this canoe out. You tell them you did. Head on me that. But if I can patch it up, I can make real progress down this river. First, I need to make some new support struts to give the canoe back its shape and rigidity. What I'm going to need is something just to repair this hole. And this spruce tree has exactly what I need. There you go, there's plenty in there. Let's go and melt it down. I'm heating the resin until it melts. Then I'm going to thicken it to make a paste to use as a natural sealant. Molten resin hardens around the wicker fibre to create a watertight seal. Good survival is about combining what you can find around you with what you already have. Just about ready to go now. As the rapids build, the inevitable happens. In this freezing glacial water, I've only got a few minutes before I develop hypothermia. And at the mercy of the river, I've got to get out. And that's long gone. <sighs> Man, look, this place has just been completely trashed. I want to get down into the mine workings to see if there's anything useful left behind. It's a dark and eerie place down here, but I'm hoping to find some more tools that can help me survive. I want to keep this burning with the oxygen. You can see it's actually struggling. I don't die, I don't die. It's out, and now I'm in darkness. If you got that night vision on the camera, just turn that on. Using infrared, the camera can see me. I'm completely blind. There you go. There you see a pinprick of light. See this? Straight down the tunnel, straight down. Finally, I can see daylight and feel fresh air blowing on my face.
Oh. I'll really be that grateful to feel the sun on my face. 